you to enjoy life. Life with Luigi, a new comedy show created by Cy Howard and starring that celebrated actor, Mr. J. Carol Nash, with Alan Reed as Pasquale. Pasco left Italy to start his new life in America, he promised his mother that he would write and tell her about his adventure. So now, let's read Luigi's letter as he writes to Mama Basco in Italy. Dear Mamma Mia, is it now a little more dive in America? I remember when I'm a first to come to him, I ask somebody how to go someplace at the loss. I'm here to one a year. I to nobody. I get the lost by myself. <laughs> Another thing. When I'm a first to come here, I think all Americans, uh, they talking to themselves. Then I find out that they're chewing a gum. <laughs> so like every American, I chew gum too. Only one the bigger difference. I swallow it. <laughs> And then I find out that you're not supposed to swallow it. You use the gum to paste up the chairs. <laughs> to cover the holes in the shoes. To keep together tables. To fill up the cracks in the wall. And lots of other things. Mamma mia, I'm very worried. If they ever stop making a tuna gum, Americans are going to fall apart. <laughs> well, is there nothing new to write to Mamma Mia? I was very happy to read in your letter today that you finally received the little radio I'm sending you a few months ago. It's what they call here midget radio. But don't worry, salesmen have told me big people can use it too. <laughs> I know you're going to enjoy this radio. But I want to think, don't let Uncle Pietro's go to get near it. He's liable to eat it. It's going to look very funny when a goat is open up his mouth and out is a come a Jack Benny. Oh, wait, Mamma Mia. I'm going to have to finish this letter later. It's a big wind coming through my door. Luigi, my friend. Hello, Luigi. Hello, hello. Hello, Pasquale. Luigi, a mailman is just to bring this letter into my spaghetti palace, but I'm going to think it's for you. How you know it's for me? It's got your name on it. <laughs> well, thanks, Pasquale. Hey, how come this letter is open? Well, while I was on my way here, I'm uh, passing my tea kettle and the letters accidentally steam over. <laughs> Ooh, Luigi, you in a terrible uh, trouble. I'm going to see you accidentally read it, too. What do you talk? How dare you have the nerve to think that me, honest a fellow like a Pasquale, is a reader you own a personal or private mail? Well, if you don't read my letter, how you know I'm in a trouble? My daughter Rose is a reader to me. <laughs> Pasquale, besides you and Rosa, who else knows I'm in a trouble? Only the whole neighborhood. The roses of voices that carry a little bit. <laughs> a little bit. Does it carry 250 pounds? Well, let me see. Square Dealer Radio Company. Dear Mr. Basco, final notice. Unless we receive a $20 payment for last installment on a midget radio by tomorrow, we shall bring a suit against you in a small claims court where we shall press the charges. Mamma mia, they're going to press my suit in the court. <laughs> Take it easy, Luigi. Be calm. Relapse. <laughs> just tell your friend Pasquale what's happening. Well, Pasquale, six months ago, I'm by radio for $22 on a time. I'm going to pay off $11. So you owe them $11. No. I'm going to have the other $11, so the company is refinancing the radio. With interest to charge, a service to charge, and the loan that they give me to make the first payment, I now owe them a 29 or oh, I did owe them a $29. I'm going to pay them a $15. So you owe them now a $14. No, I'm going to have the other 14 so they refinanced again. <laughs> so $14 with the first 11 per, with the cost of a radio, which is a 22 with interest to charge, I owe them $80. <laughs> Luigi, why people have got to go looking for oil wells when they just can't do business with you? <laughs> Believe me, you're a one-man or one-marshal plan. But, Pasquale, I'm already making three $20 payments. 
I'm asking them to wait for the last payment. Why they send me a letter like this? I don't know. It seems to me once you pay for that radio, the companies have got to go out of business. <laughs> but, Pasquale, what's this mean here on the letter? Smaller claims of court. Is it because they got a smaller claim against me? <laughs> what a booby you are. Lucky you got me to explain these things. Smaller claims of court. That's for people who know can make payments on a smaller radio. <laughs> I can teach you lots of things about a court. For instance, if somebody is to sue you about a bananas, they go to the Court of Appeals. <laughs> Mamma mia, please, Pasquale, I'm going to want to go to court. Luigi, you know I'm going to get the heart to see you rot in the jail. I'm going to give you the $20. Pasquale, you're going to do this for me? Sure, little pumpkin head. <laughs> now I'm going to do you a favor. You do me a favor. And now, Pasquale, I'm not going to marry your daughter, Rosa. All right, then no favor from me. After you pay the radio company so much of money, for measly $20, you're going to lose all the money you paid in. They're going to take it back to your radio. Oh, Pasquale, I wish I could have given back the radio and end all of this trouble. But it's impossible. The radio is in Italy. I'm going to send it to my mama Mia for present. Oh, it. Italy. Uh-huh. Uh, Luigi, you in the worst of trouble of your life. What's the matter, Pasquale? Don't you know that sending a radio to Europe that's the break of three big United States laws? Mm. Mason and Dixon law, daylight saving the time, and the NRA. <laughs> NRA? What's that? No radios abroad. <laughs> <laughs> well, Pasquale, it's the time for my night school class, and I'm going to ask advice from my teacher, Miss Spalding. All right, go, go, go. But don't expect no help from me when you come crawling back with your hands out of your knees. Well, goodbye. Goodbye, Pasquale. Mamma mia, this is a teacher me lesson. The next time I'm going to buy something on an installment plan, I'm going to make it the last payment of first. <laughs> All right, class, class, quiet, please. Please, now I'll call the roll. Mr. Basco? Here. Mr. Harwitz? Here. Mr. Olson? Here. Mr. Schultz? Here, here. Mr. Schultz, why are you saying here twice? I'm saying one for tomorrow, because I expect to be absent. <laughs> You expect to be absent. What's the reason? Well, I, I could tell a big lie and tell you I'm going to the baseball game. But I'm going to tell you the truth and say my grandmother died. <laughs> well, I'm very sorry to hear that. Will you be gone all day? Oh, yeah. It's a double header. <laughs> what? My grandfather died, too. <laughs> Mr. Schultz, I'll expect to see you tomorrow night. Why couldn't I keep my big mouth shut? I was way ahead with my grandmother. Enough of that, Mr. Schultz. <laughs> now, class, before I begin our lesson for today, are there any questions on yesterday's work? Mr. Basco? Uh, Mr. Spalding, what's a smaller claims of court? A small claims court? Mr. Basco, we didn't discuss that yesterday. Then maybe we'll discuss it today. <laughs> a discussion on a small claims court. Now, Mr. Basco, what can you possibly get out of that? Pasquale says that 20 years to life. <laughs> Luigi, what kind of trouble have you got now? Well, uh, I, I'm going to get some trouble making the last payment on my radio. I owe them $20. Ah, installment buying. Oh, you've got to be so careful what you buy, Luigi. <laughs> Take my brother Wolfgang. He bought a television set with installment. Really? What, what, what size screen was it? What's the difference? For the first year, the only thing he's seen is the repairman. <laughs> Mr. Basco, did you say that the radio company is going to sue you in the small claims court? That's uh, what I'm going to do, Miss Spalding. Luigi, why don't you go and see Alderman Johnson? You're uh, oh, that's right, Luigi. Alderman Johnson is just like that with every urgent town. Yeah. Hey, you think he's going to help him? Why, sure he will, Luigi. My cousin Wolfgang wasn't working for two years when he went up to see Alderman Johnson. Did he just found him a job? No, but he made Wolfgang number one on the unemployment insurance line. <laughs> Smile, Luigi. I'm just trying to cheer you up. Well, uh, well uh, thanks, uh, thanks, the uh, class. I'm going to go see the older man now. Maybe he's uh, helping me out. That's the spirit, Luigi. And don't look so depressed. Smile. Remember, if you let a smile be your umbrella, you can walk in the worst rainstorms, and I guarantee 
You'll die of pneumonia. <laughs> well, sure, sir. Sure, sir, you've got to be worried. Now, don't be a scaredy cat, Luigi. Even if you don't pay the company that $20, what can they do it to you? Can they take away your furniture? Can they close up your store? Can they clap you in jail for ten years? Sure, sir, can they? Why not? It's a free country. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Alderman Johnson. Oh, hello there, Colucci. Come right in. Colucci? Please, sir, my name is Bosco, Luigi Bosco. Oh, change your name, eh? Cops after you? Cops? Don't worry, Colucci. We'll beat the rat. Where are you hiding out? Hiding out? I'm a antique store on North Halstead Street. Great spot. They'll never think of looking for you there. Hold a minute, Johnson. Don't, don't you remember me? Hello, Jibasco. I'm a guy in tick store, and in the window is a picture of an honest Abe. Oh, yes. You're next to honest Abe, the used car dealer. Wonderful guy. Where's he hiding out? <laughs> please, please, Mr. Alderman, I'm talking about Abraham Lincoln, one of the greatest men who's ever lived. The greatest of all. Who can forget that great inspirational picture of Lincoln crossing the Delaware? I think it was Washington crossing the Delaware. Pasco, this is America. There's room in the boat for everybody. <laughs> please, please, Mr. Alderman, I'm coming to you for help. Well, you've come to the right man. Everybody in the district comes to me. I'm like a big sister. Then a please, Mr. Sister. <laughs> I'm already a start twenty dollars or less to pay me on a radio, and they're gonna sue me in a smaller claims court tomorrow. Oh, this is right up my alley, Basco. My buddy Judge Mitchell handles that court. Oh. Good old Squinty Mitchell. Why he and I once served a term together. Oh. A term in office, of course. <laughs> Hello, small claims. Get me the judge. Basco, this is right up my alley. Right up at the alley. Yeah. Hello, Squinty. Look, I want you to do me a favor. This is Alderman Johnson. Don't worry, Basco. Keep your shirt on. Keep your shirt on. Alderman Johnson. Oscar T. Johnson. Basco, everything looks Jake. It's a look at Jake. Yeah. What? You don't remember me. I'm a back in the alley again. <laughs> now, look here, Mitchell. I've got a lot of influence around here, and you can't slough me off like that. Please, Mr. Alderman, I let the Jake put the back on his shirt. Look here, you squint-eyed ape. I help you get in office, and I can help you out. Huh? Well, that's better. His name is Luigi Basco, and his case comes up for you tomorrow. Huh? Hmm? Okay. Basco, how much time does the radio company give you? Till it tomorrow. Tomorrow, eh? Well, I got it fixed. Oh, thanks, Mr. Alderman. Yep, if you grab the super chief in a half hour, you can be in Mexico by then. <laughs> And now for the second act of Luigi Basco's Adventures in Chicago, we turn to page two of his letter to his mother in Italy. And so, Mamma Mia, like I'm say, I'm very happy that you receive the radio. But I'm also think uh, maybe you don't like it because the color is a no match of the kitchen. So you send it back and I'm sending you something else. Like a, a dress or a, or a phonograph machine. They got a wonderful ones here with the automatic record changes. That's a work just like a magic. You just press a button and it's a smash of ten records at one time. <laughs> but of course, if, if you really like the radio... Luigi, my fellow pooper. What's the matter? You look terrible, Luigi. Like the bottom herring in the barrel. <laughs> Well, sir, I'm in a big trouble. Uh, didn't Alderman Johnson help you out? What did he tell you? Well, uh, he's a say I should keep on my shirt on. He's going to talk to Jake who's up his alley and I can be in Mexico in a half hour. <laughs> oh, Luigi, are you for shimmered? <laughs> sure, sir, it's, it's no use to talk. I can't stay here. I'm going to go out and get a $20. Oh, Luigi, my friend, when I see you like that, I would like to give you the money. Oh, thank you, sure, sir. If I had it. <laughs> yeah, but smile. 
Where are you going with that overcoat? You going to sell it? No, Schultz. I wouldn't ever sell this coat. It's my papa's coat. And it's mean more to me than anything i am got. Then why is it I never see you wearing that? Because Schultz is not the for wearing. Huh? You see, when I was leaving Italy for America, I'm never forget the other day. All the people of my town, Castellamare, they was down to the boat to see me go away. I remember how they all shouted, Goodbye, Luigi. Goodbye, goodbye. Then, then our mayor is a walk up to me, shake hands, and a kiss me on both the cheeks. <laughs> Luigi. <laughs> That's all right, Schultz. We got a lady mayor. <laughs> then... Then the mayor, she's a make a speech to me. And she's a say, Luigi, your family, Basco, is a living in Castle Amare for 300 years. And now, you're going to wait to plant a new life in America uh. with all the fine seed that your family is a give you. Always remember Castle Amare and your family and you have a good luck there. Then... Then she's a hand of my envelope. I'm opening it up. And inside is a say, from the people of a castle of Mare. <laughs> and there was a fifty dollars in American money. Oh, thank goodness. I thought maybe it was going to be another speech inside. <laughs> but, but Schultz, for a minute I was just standing there, no able to say nothing. Uh-huh. Then I'm a say, no, friends, thank you. I'm not taking this money. You need it. It's enough for, for me to always remember this day. Then, then when I'm going to get on the boat, my mom is a coming to me and she's a say, Luigi, you not take the money, but I want you should have something to remember. Then she's a giving me my papa's overcoat. I, I, I'm a never touch it until now. Luigi, now I understand. You don't want to sell the coat. You want to pawn it. Yeah, that's right, Schultz. And as soon as I'm going to get the money, I'm going to take the coat right to back. Uh-huh. Uh, Schultz, you, you know a pawnbroker? Ach, do I know a pawnbroker. <laughs> Luigi, there is a place over on Dearborn Street. <laughs> Every time I pass the window, it's like looking into my own living room. <laughs> Come on, Luigi, I go with you. Maybe going to the pawnbroker will bring you luck. Oh, thank you, Schultz. You know, my Aunt Hilda, once she got a divorce, so she went to the pawnbroker with her wedding ring. Did she get a lot of money? Ha! She is getting $25 a week, and she's still wearing that ring. But, uh, but Schultz, how is that possible? She married the pawnbroker. <laughs> well, come on, Luigi, we get the money, huh? Schultz, I'm a feeling much better already. You're a real friend, <laughs> America, I love you. You like a papa to me. From ocean to ocean. Well, Luigi, here we are at the pawn shop. Oh, look in that window. The sun is fading, my love seat. <laughs> they used to have Venetian blinds in the window to protect it, but somebody took them out of hock. Well, Luigi, go on inside. Well, sure, sir. Ain't you coming in with me? Oh, no, no. It breaks my heart every time that pawnbroker drops ashes on my Persian rug. <laughs> so go ahead, Luigi. I made out that. All right. Hello. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm bringing this overcoat, and I'm going to like to borrow some money on it. Well, let's have a look at it. You see? See how nice it look? It's got a silk lining, pearl buttons, and a genuine beaver collar. Yeah, let me see. I'll give you two dollars. Two dollars? Please, mister, you don't know what a kind of coat this is. It's one of the finest in all Italy. Who was given it to me by my father, and his father is giving it to him. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize it was worn that much. Make it a dollar. <laughs> But, mister, I'm going to have a $20. Look, mister, I got 50 coats. People leave them and never call for them. What am I going to do with all of these coats? Well, uh, maybe it's going to be a call of winter and you can wear them. <laughs> Please, mister, I promise you, as soon as I get the money, I'm going to pay you. I'm sorry. One buck. Take it or leave it. If you don't mind, I'm going to leave it. Leave it? The coat? No, the store. Well, Luigi, how did you make it out? 
The shulster was no good. He's offered me only one dollar. Oh, what a shizzle, corpse. <laughs> but look at that love seat in the window. He gave me $13 for that love seat, and half of it was never used. <laughs> I gotta get back to my store now. Oh, I wish I could help you more. Well, I thank you for trying to shoot. You're a real friend. Oh, smile, Luigi. Sheer up. Remember what they say in the clothing business. Every gray suit has a silver lining. <laughs> and behind every April shower is hiding Al Joseph. <laughs> well, Luigi, goodbye. And remember, smile, smile. <laughs> you know, today it ain't so bad. <laughs> Serena Luigi. Hello, Pasquale. Ah, uh -huh. so you coming back just like I said, like a puppy dog with his tail between his ears. <laughs> well, you got that twenty dollars for the radio yet? No. So I'm heard all about how you tried, Luigi. Why are you running around like a crazy little rabbit looking for that green stuff when all the time I'm a sitting here with this big head of cabbage? <laughs> You're so right, Pasquale. You're the biggest cabbage head I know. <laughs> That's a funny thing. When I'm saying it, it's a come out of different. <laughs> Luigi, why are you struggle so much? Why you no give up? You marry my Rosa, I'ma pay radio people a twenty dollars. There's no smaller claims to call for you. Mama's a keeper of radio, everybody's a happy. Lisa Pasquale. All right, the donor marry Rosa. Go ahead, go to court. They export you. So somebody else is import you. Then they export you again. Then it's import, export, import, export. What, is your whole ambition in life to be like a sardine? <laughs> please, please, Pasquale, I'm feeling terrible. Then you need somebody to cheer you up. Rosa! 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 You got me now! My little Cupid doll. <laughs> Say hello to Luigi. Luigi's making up his mind about you right now. Now, you give him a little idea what's to happen when he's married to you. He's to come home with a knife, he's open up the door, and what do you say to him? Close the door, baby, it's cold outside. <laughs> Shut up your face. <laughs> well, Luigi, what do you say? Well, Pasquale, if I was you and you was me, and I was asking you to marry her, what do, what do you say? Luigi, that's not a fair question. <laughs> Besides, I'm asking you first. Pasquale, is it not that I'm going to want to marry Rossi? Is it just that I'm going to want to stay bachelor? All right, you stupid boob. You know, making the last payment, NRA is getting you. NRA? That's all right. We see who's going to have the last laugh. This is your finish. Pardon me, who's Mr. Basco? Oh, that's me, I'm Luigi Basco. Greetings. What? A man of the army? <laughs> <laughs> Here, summon small claims court. It's from the Square Deal Radio Company. Well, Luigi, what are you going to do now? You stand in the lap of justice. Where are you going to get the $20, little man? $23.85. He pays the court costs. $23.85? Mamma mia, now they're refinancing at the summons. That's all right. Wait till they start the refinancing of your life and you're making the payments out of your jail sentence. Please, Pasquale. <laughs> mister, mister, you're going to get the money. If you just wait a little while longer. Oh, sure, mister. He's going to get the money. How? This is a broken down little businessman has not got a penny. Hey, Luigi, maybe you're selling the man that coat you brought in with you. Hey. That ain't a bad coat. Please, I don't touch the coat. <laughs> Go ahead. Try it out, mister. Maybe you buy the coat and give Luigi the $20. That's to take care of the sum. Hey, mister, take your hands off of that coat. Don't get excited. Hey, this is nice. 
Silk lining, beaver collar. Well, Luigi looks like you've got a customer he's going to buy. Yeah, fits me perfectly. Bud, you got a deal. Forget the summons. I'll take care of that twenty three eighty five, and I keep the coat. Hey, Luigi, you made a deal. I'm surprised at myself. Hey, Mister, take off of that coat. I'm never get mad, but I'm like to see you out of my store. All right, I'm going to jail. I'm going to do whatever I'm going to do, but that's the radio. That's with my mom and me and the people of Castle Mare. And they're going to be happy listening to it. But you, take off for that coat. All right, all right. Hey, what's this in the pocket? Looks like something is sewed here in the pocket. And, uh, sewed what? in the pocket? Let me see. It's, it's an envelope. I'm open up. Hey, Luigi, you have some money as a fallout. Fifty bucks. Luigi, what's it say in the letter? Well, Luigi, why you no read it? Uh, Dear countryman Luigi, today you live in Italy. You say you don't want this money because you say we need it more. Luigi, you're young yet. Someday maybe you find yourself all alone and the money is a help you out. Here we got each other. That's more than money. Always remember Castle Mare and your family. And you have good luck. Hey, there's something else in this other pocket. Here, is a note. Read the Luigi. Go ahead. Uh, dear Luigi, what's in this pocket, never take out, always leave it there. Hmm. Does it feel like, feel like could be gold? I look. Wait, wait. Don't touch, Luigi. Look, you a gambling man, I'm a gambling man too. I give you twenty dollars of cash for anything what's in that pocket. What do you say, huh? Oh, no, 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 oh, Come on, Luigi. Is it twenty dollars? All right, well, if you want it so much. Good. Now give me what's in the pocket. All right, Pasquale, here. Two mothballs. <laughs> Luigi, give me back my twenty dollars. I can't, the Pasquale. It's against the big law, NRA. NRA. No refunds allowed. <laughs> So, Mamma Mia, I was thinking of things over. And I think maybe you should keep the radio. Even if it's no match to your furniture. After all, the radio was an event by Italian fellow Marconi. And now he's being supported by two other Italians. Como and Sinatra. <laughs> and oh, yes, yes, Mamma Mia. Thanks for that money you put for me in Papa's pocket. It's coming very handy. And I hope you forgive me, Mamma Mia, because I did something you didn't want I should do. You write on a note I should not take out of a pocket. But when Pasquale has offered me $10 a month of all, I could not resist. <laughs> Signed, your loving son, Luigi. The little immigrant. Why Luigi is a Sci Howard production is written by Mac Benoff and Lou Dermott and directed by Mac Benoff. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Thank you.